And so I want to talk about the Privacy Act um, that, of the Federal Health Care Reform Act because I would think as a person that I'd be covered right there under my own Privacy Act that you cannot do this without a form. Mm -hmm. Well, well, two things. One is health care reform and one is the stimulus bill. And your viewers just sort of need to try. I'm just going to try and make this very simple. Okay. The economic stimulus bill, which passed in February of 2009, had what was called the High Tech Act in it. Okay. And the High Tech Act requires, um, well, first of all, it gives $23 billion to create electronic medical records across the country. And this essentially creates what's called a national health information network okay. so that everybody's data will be put on the grid without their consent. Now, you thought that you had consent and that you should, the parents and the child should be protected. Yes. Well, the medical record information is not protected, nor is all of this, because we have a law called HIPAA. Mm -hmm. And a lot of your people are now thinking, well, that's the privacy law. Exactly. But it's actually the no privacy law. HIPAA allowed 2.2 uh, million entities to have access to our information. And those entities are all sorts of business entities, hospitals, health plans, clearing houses, the government, all sorts of entities mm -hmm. and all the people in them to have access to our medical records without our consent. The word consent is not even in HIPAA. So the whole plan here has been to create this National Health Information Network, which is a national data system mm -hmm. to put everybody's medical records online to be able to link them from the moment of birth to the moment of death to know everything about the individual. Okay. All without consent. So yeah. it's really important to understand that with the stimulus bill, mm -hmm. this $23 billion that went to create this National Health Information Network, we would like state legislatures to, to uh, require consent before any person's records are put on the National Health Information Network. Mm -hmm. This would give you back all your rights and would also not allow uh, entities, the government and others, to look at your information without your consent. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we really want. We believe this is a protection for the people. Right. Um, and, and when you look at the health reform bill that was recently passed, it's just full of surveillance. And so I, I brought you this brochure, yes. which your listeners can find um, online. And it's really all about the surveillance in mm -hmm. the health reform bill. And it shows how they're even going to look at your health status. Mm -hmm. They're going to look whether you do things that they say are prevention and wellness. Mm -hmm. They're going to target people according to their weight, according to their, their exercise, according to their food. Their, they are going to do a lot of surveillance in order to try and get you to do what the government feels they want you to do to stay healthy. Right. It will come out of your employer's office. It will come out of your health plan. And um, it's incredible to me how much they are going to look at. The, um, the Department of Health and Human Services just announced this morning mm -hmm. that they have a special initiative to try to get people with chronic diseases to... Um, now, I wouldn't say to shape up, oh. but but uh, to do what they want them to do to get better. Mm -hmm. So this is really about um, an, in an incredible, intrusive encroachment on the private lives of individuals. And it will all help it happen through the National Health Information Network, which, again, is why I say it's so important that we get consent of the individual before your data is ever shared outside your doctor's office. Mm -hmm. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to live like that. I'm not no. going to wake up in the morning and say, oh, you know, gosh, I think I want to be ill the rest of my life. And, <laughs> you know, that doesn't, that to me doesn't make sense as well yeah. because we probably have seen a lot of doctors to right. try and get some of the remedies. And I have a girlfriend that now is going to go see uh, an alternative doctor because Western medicine is not fixing it for her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is her right to do that. That is right. You know? Yep. The problem with chronic disease, which is why they're targeting it, is because we have so much third-party payment mm -hmm. for health care that when you actually get sick, mm -hmm. because and because we prepay, we no longer have a health insurance system. We have a prepaid health care financing system, okay. which means you pay all this money and you have a really low deductible or no deductible. Mm -hmm. um, so you pay all this money in advance, and the health plan, the government, think it's their money. Mm -hmm. And because they think it's their money, they want you to be healthy and not use it. So you become, when you have a chronic disease, you become a burden mm -hmm. on the healthcare system. If it was your money, you would be looked at as a financial 
benefit yes. when you came into the doctor's office, but now you're considered a burden. And I think that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand mm -hmm. is when they pre prepay in advance, when they have an insurance policy that covers everything, mm -hmm. they, they no longer have the power. They have to have the dollars to have the power, and that mm -hmm. has always been the way it is in, in our country and around the world everywhere. When you have the money, you have the power, but when you give it away in advance mm -hmm. and then you want them to pay for you, yeah. you've lost the power. Oh. It almost sounds like a bank loan. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah. except you know? you're not guaranteed to get it back. No. No. Wow. And, and as a matter of fact, laws say that health insurance companies can have medical necessity definitions. So they can define what they want as medically necessary or is not. And when you look at the federal health reform bill, mm -hmm. what you see there is the Secretary of Health and Human Services has the right to decide for absolutely everybody in the country what services will be covered and which will and those that will not. Mm -hmm. So she has essentially fiat power to make the final decision for all of us. Yes. And then our insurance companies don't have to cover it. And then if they think it's not med medically necessary for you, even though they have to cover it, mm -hmm. they don't have to cover it for you. Wow. So if someone feels that their depression has actually, you know, gotten the better of their life and they want to go see a therapist, but the insurance doesn't feel that they would benefit, then they'll dec they actually decline. deny them. Yeah. That's right. Oh. That's right. And very interesting, because of your program here, mm -hmm. what, what uh, a very new thing in the bill that a lot of people don't understand is that there is no co-insurance for preventive care, no sharing of costs. Mm which means that if you're denied some sort of preventive care service, let's mm -hmm. say, okay. you can't pay cash for it. Oh, I have no right to pay cash for something? No, that... and this is not the first time. If you're a Medicare patient, mm -hmm. you can't pay cash for something that Medicare denies. Otherwise, it's considered fraud if the doctor takes the money. Oh. That was a 1997 law. So here we have in the federal reform this beginning for everybody else in their private insurance mm -hmm. because it says that you are not allowed to share costs for any preventive services. The health insurance company has to cover them all. You can't pay for them. Oh. You know, yeah. uh, people don't know this, <laughs> yeah. right? This is very scary mm -hmm. because it says your cash is no longer good for that which you want. Wow. So, And my mother, for instance, um, on Medicare, she actually was denied some uh, actually health services now. Mm -hmm. And so she is saving her money so that she can, you know, pay for this in her long run because this is something that's very important to her. Mm. That she needs someone to come in and help her now that she's had both hips replaced mm -hmm. and to that point that she's saving her money. If it's a yeah. Medicare covered service mm -hmm. and Medicare has denied it, she cannot pay for it unless she can find somebody who is not, who has um, opted out of Medicare. They can accept cash, okay. but it means they have to get rid of all their Medicare patients in order to do that. Oh, right. Well, that wouldn't be financial. That's part of the 1997 law that Congress passed. Okay. So when when you're talking about that, she needs to to find out whether that's a Medicare covered service. It sounds like it is because mm -hmm. Medicare denied it. But if they deny it because they don't cover it at all, mm -hmm. she can get cash and she can pay whomever she wants. Wow. But if it is a Medicare covered service, it's mm -hmm. part of the benefit package and Medicare denied it, then she has to find someone who has opted out of Medicare in order to pay them cash. Okay. So as long as the viewers know that, that it's throughout the whole country, not just in Minnesota or different states. That's correct. Yeah. Good yep. to know. Um, can we back up a little bit mm -hmm. about the actual Privacy Act? Um, there are parents out there that actually have concerns about their child that might be using chemicals. Mm. So you take your child in and you are responsible for them until they're 18 mm. years old. Mm -hmm. So you have them go in and you're thinking, oh, let's just take some blood and see how things are looking. But then they deny you the actual results. But yet you financially have to support that person and if they have to go into rehab or something like that, then you have to pay for that. That's correct. So could we elaborate a little bit on that as trying to be a parent, being preventive, and what rights do we have as the mother or father? Right. This has been a very contentious issue. Mm -hmm. And here in Minnesota, there was uh, an attempt to try and get parents access to the medical records of their minors. Okay. And as far as I know, it was unsuccessful. In Arizona, the legislature there recently passed a law re requiring 
doctors to give access to the parents okay. for their minors. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think it's <laughs> I think it's it has not been settled. Mm -hmm. And the the if there's one shining um, light about HIPAA, the HIPAA so-called privacy rule, mm -hmm. is that states can sign uh, states can pass stronger privacy protecting laws than HIPAA, and since HIPAA doesn't protect anybody's privacy, anything is better than HIPAA. So states can do that, and they can pass a law that actually says that um, everybody has privacy in the state of Minnesota. They can pass one that says you have to have consent. They can pass one that says that parents have to have access to any medical expenses that they have to pay for. Yes. Because that is what's critical. I mean, is there anything else that you buy that you don't know what you're buying? No. I mean, that's absurd, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So if they're going to pay for it, mm -hmm. they need to have access to it. And besides that, you know, who knows what some other provider who does not have the love relationship of a parent and child mm -hmm. is advising the child? Yeah. Who knows what's happening there? It is the parent's responsibility to be able to protect the child mm -hmm. from those who really don't care about the child as mm -hmm. a person. Yeah. Wow, that is yeah. amazing. And thank you so much. You are just been such an advocate. And I wanted to throw out to my viewers mm -hmm. that these are all facts. It's nothing that you're interpreting at all. And right. I want to let them know that. And you know, one thing is this little brochure here. Mm -hmm. It actually has the sections of the federal health reform law in brackets behind each of the 10 little things that we think every patient and doctor should know. Yes. So there's 10 things in there. There's a whole bunch of um, citations, just one little section, and all they have to do is go to our website, pick out the, you know, click on the law, mm -hmm. and then just go find the section. So if they doubt even what is said in here, they can just go find the section and read it for themselves. Yeah, the facts right there. Right. Yeah, that's good to know. Yep. <laughs> well, we have a few minutes left. We're running out of time, but okay. I know that, that there's some things that I really would love for you to throw out to my viewers. Okay. Yeah. I think that uh, everyone needs to understand that healthcare of today um, is in a real flux. And it's really about whether or not patients and doctors at the end of the day will have rights to make decisions that work for every individual patient. It's also about whether you will have rights of consent regarding treatment, rights of choice regarding treatment and insurance, and rights of consent regarding privacy and the DNA. We believe that DNA um, there should be DNA ownership laws so that every individual owns their DNA and no one can use it, can sh uh, store it, can access it without the consent of the individual. We believe that every individual has to have the right to make choices about their doctors and about their treatments. And several states have passed a Freedom of Choice and Healthcare Act, six states in fact, and that that is something that every state should do because what that means is you as an individual are free to pay any doctor for any treatment that you wish to pay them for as long as it's a lawful treatment. And so that kind of freedom is what every individual needs to have. We also believe that the public is not attuned to all the pieces of the 2700 page federal health care reform bill and how it's going to impact them. But the fact of the matter is things that you you can't even imagine are going to happen. Things like catastrophic health insurance is being outlawed for anyone over the age of 29. Um, there's only going to be four types of health plans. There are only going to be health plans. In other words, there's only going to be managed care, not any kind of high deductible um, insurance plan, perhaps not even health savings accounts. There's only going to be bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Those are the only kind of health insurance plans you can have. There's going to be an exchange where you have to go to get your health insurance and where they will know everything about you as the government in order for you to buy the insurance. I mean, there's incredible things happening um, in healthcare that you may not know, but I think you should be concerned about. And so it's my hope that you will go to our website, healthcarefreedom.us, sign up for our alerts, sign up for the Health Freedom Watch, which is by email or by hard copy, email monthly, hard copy quarterly, you know, get some of our little baby DNA cards and pass them out to your friends. They're just tiny little things. We're happy to send them to you. And uh, let more people know about what's happening here in Minnesota and what's happening in uh, national health reform because it's going to impact every one of you. Wow. Well, thank you so much for your insight thank on you this. It's for been bringing me great. in. Yes. For more information, please visit www.healthcarefreedom.us or call her at 651 646-8935. Again, that's 651-646-8935.
And I look forward to having you view other shows of Knowledge for Wellness and visit my website at www.knowledgeforwellness.com and let me know where you viewed my show. And you can also connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. And the mission of Knowledge for Wellness is to inform viewers on health issues, to expose, educate, and make viewers aware to enhance themselves and their loved ones for a better quality of life. And I hope we have provided you with more knowledge to benefit you and your loved ones. So until next time, be well and goodbye. Over time you've healed so much in me And I am living proof That although my darkest hour had come Your light could still shine through And at times it's just enough to cast The shadow on the wall Though I am grateful that you shine Your light on me at all